ahead of the Warriors. James Harden has a reputation of coming up small in the playoffs, though, with OKC. And last year, game six of the second round against the Spurs, he was two of 11 from the floor, six turnovers, six fouls, and he took a lot of heat for falling up the team's 39-point loss to the Spurs with a doubleheader at the club. Regardless of all of that, Stephen A., do you believe in Harden now? Yes, I do. I really, really do. And I'm going to tell you why. Because of CP3, that's why. CP3 is somebody that's an elite point guard in this game. He's only averaging 12 and 10. Uh, he's been back for the last seven games. They've won all seven games. He's that floor general. But guess what? He's able to play off the ball as well. When I look at James Harden, even though there have been times where he's come up small, particularly in the NBA Finals against Miami when he was missing in action at certain intervals, and I called him out for that, this kid is a superstar. James Harden is special, averaging 31.7, having nearly 10 assists per game. He is that legit. Now, obviously, come playoff time, that's not necessarily the case. Even though he averaged over 28 points in 11 playoff games last year, he was shooting like 41% from the field. And obviously, he didn't show up for the game six against the San Antonio Spurs. I lamented the fact that there was somebody else wearing that James Harden jersey, James Harden jersey, because that was an imposter. But he had to carry such a load. The ball was in his hands for every possession. When you're going up a team, especially one as elite and as well coached as the San Antonio Spurs, it's going to work against you. Not to mention the fact there were times when Kawhi Leonard was defending him and Kawhi Leonard is universally recognized as one of the top two defenders in the game and so when I look at it from that perspective I'm saying there's explanations to that even though we still expected more from him in this particular season CP3 being there takes pressure off of him because he doesn't always have to be on the ball he can get off the ball ball handling and offensive orchestrating responsibilities can go to someone other than him and the fact that you have that pressure to take off of him assuming the other guys are going to step up and do what they potentially are capable of doing in terms of shooting the rock from the perimeter, I think that James Harden is going to have a party this postseason. I think he's going to recognize the shrapnel of criticism he's received. He is going to answer the bell accordingly, and I think the superstar that we see during the regular season will show up in the postseason as well this go-round. This is the worst part of this job, actually. This is the worst part of the job. A player that you root for, and you're asked, do you believe in them? Because we're really talking about the postseason. We know during the regular season, James Harden can play at MVP level. And this year so far, he's been better than ever. But if you're asking me, do I believe in him? No, not in the postseason because he hasn't done it yet. He's had good games, of course. He's had good averages because he's the you know, high usage player on a team that shoots a lot of threes. And he's a great player, off- great offensive player. And I'm rooting for him, Stephen A. I hope he proves me wrong. And it's not impossible that guys break out of it, given enough reps. But... He hasn't done it when it's mattered most, and he's had many, many opportunities. The sample size is quite large, be it when they were, you know, on on a Thunder team in the playoffs when it mattered most and he's coming off the bench, or later on on a Rockets team where he is the star, the focal point of the entire team. He continually comes up small in the playoffs to the point, and in critical moments, to the point where I start looking for answers. You know, there are athletes like Peyton Manning, greatest regular season player in the history of football. I don't think it's that close. And in the postseason, in the playoffs, something much, much less than that. You start looking around for answers. One of the answers I've come up with is when that player's doing it because of their cerebral ability, ability largely, Peyton Manning, James Harden, he's out thinking a lot of people, and you get to a playoff situation where the other team also has really, really smart players, then it comes down to who's the better athlete. Peyton didn't have a rocket arm, and James Harden doesn't have the right. same kind of athletic ability in terms of speed and, and hops and all that stuff that some of the guys he's coming up with. The point is not to, for me to examine the why right now. It's that right. he's been so much less than the normal version of himself when it matters okay. most that I've had to start looking for answers with James Harden. So until right. he does it, I can't say I'm, I believe he's going to do well, it. Well, let, let me, let, you know, <clears throat> I can get where you're coming from, but I'm coming from a basketball standpoint from this perspective. When you have a guy like CP3, you can look at CP3, an elite point guard. You can fantasize of what Kobe would have been with him if it was six, seven years ago when they were supposed to connect with one another. You can look at it from that perspective. You can turn around, all right, and look at this roster this year. Ryan Anderson is shooting better than 40% from three-point range. Eric Gordon hasn't even started going yet because he's struggling with his three-point shooting at about 31%, but we know that he could put the rock up from long range. Trevor Reza, same thing. He's been shooting pretty well from three-point range. So when you have marksmen like that that can get the ball in the hole from long range if open and you got a guy like cp3 on the floor with you that can get things going okay then that takes an a tremendous level of pressure off james harden 
James Harden hasn't had that luxury before. When he was in Oklahoma City, he was coming off the bench. You had Durant, you had Russell Westbrook. To a lesser degree, you had Serge Ibaka. And even though James Harden could ball, we didn't know he was this type of baller. So he wasn't the option that those three were years ago in Oklahoma City. He comes to Houston. He's the face of the franchise. Even though Dwight Howard ultimately arrived there, we all know that Dwight Howard was limited offensively. Defense, rebound, and block shots with his forte. He may have wanted the ball, but he didn't necessarily deserve the ball, which put all the onus on the shoulders of James Harden. So you go out and you get D'Antoni as your coach. D'Antoni is an offensive guru. He spreads the floor very well, pushes the tempo, keep going, keep going, even allows you to relax on defense because he doesn't want to disrupt the flow. Well, who was the captain of that ship? Consistently having to push the ball up the court for 82 nights plus every playoff game. That was James Harden. You don't have that anymore, and why? Because CP3 is your backcourt well, okay. mate. Whatever you saw listen, from James I'll, Harden in the postseason, it'll be different this year. Listen, I, this is this. I said from the beginning reminds me of before my time, Stephen A. You may have remembered this. I don't know. You're a little bit older than me. I don't know if you're old enough to remember when the Knicks got Earl the Pearl Monroe, Black Jesus, who was. By the yep. way, kids, if you think that these guys are my nice today, mother. and they are. The, go, go, go YouTube Earl Monroe. Just go YouTube Earl Monroe. Winston-Salem State University. Meta, oh. meta, make sure you say it. Winston-Salem State uh, University. That's right. Winston-Salem State. That's right. Hmm, who else went there? The point is that he was a divisional rival of Clyde Frazier. They were both high-usage combo guards. Could it work? There's only one basketball. It worked to the tune of a championship against like an invincible Lakers team championship. So it can work. And when the Rockets got CP3, a high usage, ball dominant, divisional rival point guard, and they're going to use Harden and, and CP3 in the backcourt as combo guards, how that's going to, how's that going to work? They're undefeated when the two of them are on the court together. Yes, Stephen A., I agree that, that CP3 will make them better. He'll even take some pressure off James Harden. My question is, is it just the pressure that's getting to James Harden? Or are there things that are different in the playoffs? For example, you ain't going to play second of back-to-back -back road games. For example, the other team has more time to scout you and figure out how they want to play you. Another example, there are better athletes among the best teams. They have more of them. They have guys who are just as smart as you, but they can jump and run faster than you if you're, a, like as I said, well, Peyton Manning, right? Or James Harden. I or a guy who's work. doing a lot. Uh, doing it a lot on cerebral ability as much as physical ability. So I have not seen Harden do it. I don't think CP3's presence Look, means suddenly he's going to be that guy. I'm rooting I, for him. I, I'll give you the last word with, the, with uh, needing an answer to this question. How much more difficult do you think it's going to be for teams to prepare for CP3 and James Harden as opposed to just James Harden? Well, it ain't going to be easier. That's for sure. It was a good pickup by the Rockets. They're a better team now. Their puncher's chance against all teams has just increased. All right. Harden currently leads the lead in scoring and assists, and the team is on a seven-game win streak. But, gentlemen, we need to get to a team that cannot relate to that success. Let me tell you, it's a giant mess in New York. Should Big Blue go back to the Book of Eli, and who should be the new man in charge? We attack the state of the G-Men next. And